back for my next trip, and this one's gonna be um, really different. I've been going to Asia a lot because I love Asian food. Uh, I love exploring Asian countries. I haven't been to that, I've just been dying to go. And finally, I am going to Italy. And my main reason for going to Italy, of course, it's the food. Again, on this trip, I'm, I'm not taking my crew. It's just gonna be like a more intimate trip, so I'm just gonna be vlogging the whole time. I cannot wait for my first bite of pizza in Italy. Also, I gotta say, another reason I'm going there is because of David Chang's show, Ugly Delicious. Man, I, 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 I've never had dough that melted in my mouth before, so that needs to happen. So I'm on my way to the airport. Uh, what's kind of crazy is that I'm flying from New York and then flying back into JFK. So now I'm gonna go to Queens, I'm gonna park there, I'm gonna park at my parents' house, and then take the train into Manhattan, meet up with my buddy Ben for lunch, and then I'm off to Italy. This is gonna be really exciting. So today, Ben wanted Korean food instead of our typical steaks and burgers and whatever. So I wanted to try this place out. This is Dong's Bogum Black. This is their second location. It's a little pricey place, but usually Korean barbecue is always gonna be pricey. But the food is off the chart. So usually we get steaks and uh, pizza. What, 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 which one do you say? After that burger, but I didn't feel that bad. I, I didn't feel good, and then like just yeah. it just crept up, and I was hot. And I was so you wanted Korean today? Uh, this place, I uh, have you been to Don's Boca? It's probably so. one of my favorite Korean yeah. places. Yeah. Maybe it is the, my favorite Korean place in the city. This is their second store, so. Oh, this is it? Yeah, this is nice. Don's Boca Black. This is like fancy. Wow, this is nice. Right, check it out. Hi, right, buddy Mo. Hey, what's up, bud? The grill is actually on the side now. It's not in the middle of the table, so you get more space in the table. It's actually the first time I saw that. Yeah. You seen that before? Yeah, I've never seen that before. It's usually in the table. Yeah. Right? It's cool. It's the thing I think and there's no exhaust here. I asked them why there's no exhaust, and actually this table actually sucks in all the smell and the smoke. And that's pretty cool. A lot of times I try to do a vlog in a Korean restaurant, it's always like, there's a, there's a chimney here, <laughs> so you can cover half my face. It's a lot of kimchi, but we're using a dried radish. So I'll take it, uh, the shiitake mushroom. It's called a yuche, so you choy. And this will be the, uh, the fish cakes. Pretty, tasty, good. Wow, look at this kimchi. Yeah, I need some kimchi right now. This is a good choice because if I'm in Italy, I can't get a lot of good Asian food. Get all you can of this stuff before you go to Italy. Italy's gonna be pasta and tomatoes. This is Jay, Jay's the manager. He's explaining some food stuff to me. So this is chicharron, wow. Chicken liver mousse. This is very not Korean. Uh, Korean. <laughs> uh, chicken liver mousse. I, uh, chicken liver mousse? Wow. Yes. That's awesome. Right. Chicharron. Pork skin. Never have I ever dipped chicken liver before in my life. This is fantastic. This is. You never thought coming to a Korean restaurant you get that? Oh, good lord, that's awesome. Chicharrones are sometimes a little thick. This is like, this is like a chip. So ridiculous and creamy. It, you, it doesn't taste ordinary. Yeah. It doesn't, it just tastes so freaking good. I'm thinking this might work because it's a little acid and then you got the savory chicken liver and the fatty pork skin. Just take a piece and just dunk it into the sauce. Yeah, take a uh, leaf? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is the leaf? Uh, it's a shiso. Shiso. So it's like uh, Japanese uh, meat. Yeah. You guys like how the micro herb, uh, my 
chorizo. Yeah, plays with it. It has a it's nice, almost like a sweet, refreshing taste to yeah. fry and, and all that stuff. I, I love the fried outer shell of this. This is just incredible. Uh, this is for the barbecue, right? Yep. This, is the, this is not for the barbecue. Oh, I was thinking like, oh, this is the grill? This is not the grill. No, it's not the grill. What is this? This is an induction. Oh, uh, okay. So basically what we do is we have an electric uh, system uh -huh. that goes through the magnetizers, right? Uh -huh. Vibrates the metal on top so that it keeps it warm. Wait, wait, so, so Jay is moving this thing around the table on purpose? Yeah, to find the uh, application for the magnet. For the magnet? Yeah. Oh, okay, so what does that what does that do though? It's gonna make the plate warm. Oh, so it keeps the meat warm? Yes. Oh, so no longer cold plated meat? Yes. Yo, that's freaking genius. Yeah. Meat is being cooked here, and all the smoke and all that smell is gone. It transferred to the little keep warm plate. Crispy wing. I'm gonna dunk it. Uh, let's see, what do you what do you what do you recommend? I prefer the one on the right. right? Yes. This sauce looks like more of my style. Yo, Ben, try this chicken, man. Yeah, man. Koreans, I think, love love the chicken, right? Yep. <laughs> How's your chicken? Delicious. Look at that. Sure. How's your chicken? Juicy, crispy, perfect. Just like an appetizer chicken lollipop before our steaks. You ready for the steaks, Buck? Dude, I'm ready. Let's do it. Give me that nice marble steak. <laughs> Here. Dip it in salt a little bit. Yep. A little bit of salt. And you guys get your salt from where? Argentina? Yeah. Argentina salt? It's called yeah. Argentinian rock salt. Argentinian rock salt. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, man. Okay. That's a juicy steak. I like it tender. This is tender. Everybody loves tender steak. Yeah, it's great, right? This is good. Just with the salt, pure steak with the with this uh, Argentinian salt. Yep. That's uh, rock salt. So, so even though we uh, went to Korea, we still have steaks there. <laughs> yeah, man. That's I a good outcome. I thought we weren't gonna have steaks. We're That's a good outcome. Like, really fabulous <laughs> steak right now. That's a good outcome. Steaks always better with steak. Spread this on a bagel. I think it'll, it's spreadable. This is the closest things I, I had to bag you. The marbling is like perfect. It's like okay. you want you. It's it, like Italian marble. It's so incredibly buttery. It's this is. Oh, it's it's so, smells, it's right? so, oh, no, literally, it literally tastes like a piece of butter. Look at all the juice that's coming out of this beef when you poke it. And I'm sorry to be poking it, but look at that. You see all that juice coming out? I mean, if you want something closest to Japanese Wagyu, this is the closest I've tasted so far. Don't leave this, and I can't do it. Damn. You, you made 
the steak sad today. You did? No, I mean, this is steak's feeling. All right, I'm gonna tell you, this place is amazing. The steak, right? The steak and the beef taste like butter. I just couldn't eat this, I couldn't finish it. It's like Yo, too much butter for me. I think the steak, the steak is great. Um, also, you guys, if you guys come here, you gotta get the chicharrón and the chicken liver oh, pate. Yeah. That was incredible. Oh, that's good. Very good. I'm loaded, I'm like, Beef is coming out of my ears right now. There's so much beef because I ate my portion and I ate Ben's portion. And or most of Ben's portion. And you ate the fried chicken. <laughs> You're gonna eat that I mean, too, I ate right? the fried chicken. There's one more piece. Uh, yeah. I'll take it off. Wow. Yeah, take it off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, verdict, this is a really, really solid place. You guys should check it out. Two thumbs up. All right, we're gonna go eat some dessert and then uh, Italy. Mo owns Kiki. So he's gonna get us some, some stuff at Kiki. Yeah, Kiki is awesome. awesome. It's smaller, yep. and then we have the cookies and cream fancy. Mm -hmm. you, uh, it's like an Oreo type of... Uh, There's only the reason I'm friends with them, so I get free tarts. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculously good. That's enough food. Mm. Thank you. Three for me, three for Ben. So good. It's awesome, right? All right. No cheese, right? I'm gonna hit you to the airport. Hey, Mo, thanks for the time. All right. Also, I'm gonna some hanging today. Thank you, too. Yeah, good. Thanks for the time, man. All right. So anyway, like I said before, I am uh, flying out of Newark Airport and flying back to JFK. This trip, I'm flying United Business Class to Venice, so, so I'm going to be able to show you guys what that's like. I'm so full of steak and cheese tarts, I can't fit anything else in. So here's the itinerary for Italy to Venice, then heading to Florence, then I'm gonna start heading south to Florence, and for sure I'll be eating the whole way. One takeaway of flying out at this time um, at New York, and I don't fly out of New York a lot, is just busy. It's like this airport, it's just packed. Terminal C is pretty nice. I mean, a lot of restaurants, a lot of outlets, a lot of seats where you can sit. It's just a ton of people. my first time flying business class international in American Airlines, so let's check this place out. You don't get a lot of foot space. I mean, it's enough for me, but usually it's kind of gets it just gets progressively narrower as you go. Around business class um, here, you have to kind of step over your neighbor to get to the aisle. So you don't get as much privacy here as you do on most Asian airlines. Even though I eat a lot, I'm still excited to see this. served an ice cream sundae.
Dennis, so I'm a complete moron. Um, I, I forgot to pack a, uh, a lightning cord for my for my phone, so my phone's about to die. So I have no idea how to get to my hotel right now with my phone. First thing I guess, I gotta go buy a lightning cord, and then I gotta get some cash, uh, and I gotta figure out how to get to my hotel. It's really early in the morning. It's like, well, not early, but it's like nine. Can't check in until two, so I figure I put my luggage down and go find food. I can't do any of that unless I know where I'm going. So hopefully. There's there's a place in the airport that sells this cord. For some reason, the ATM at the airport just doesn't work for me. Um, I ended up getting a boat ticket to my hotel. This is gonna be really cool. I know this is like a very water-esque city, uh, but still, taking a boat to the hotel. Let's go. Right now, looking for the docks. I still can't believe I'm here. I've been wanting to come to Italy since I first discovered pizza in America. Now I just gotta figure out where the boat is. You gotta go down this super long walkway. I guess this is the box. This is it. Still can't believe I'm here. Look at this. Look at these buildings just walking around here. It's like nothing has changed for hundreds of years. They just walk everyone. So most of the streets are really narrow because basically alleyways. This is where everybody walks to. There's shops and houses on either side. These mini bridges everywhere. I think those guys got the right idea. Just like random charming little cafes on the side of the right on the side of the street. The greatest thing about this: no cars, no motorbikes. Just gotta walk everywhere. And it's so easy to get lost here because it's just so many little. Wait, I think I'm lost. Telling me to go through this. Hold on, cross street. The cement door. It's actually used to be an address. Reminds me of an Edgar Allan Poe story. It takes me to this cool little residential square. Just like nothing here, except for a couple shops. Seriously, it's these are the directions. This little alleyway can only fit two rows of people. This is Venice. There's a door right there, by the way. It's sort of mysterious, too, because you're like, what's behind all these old doors? And it takes me to the canal, and it seems like everybody's got a bolt. Finally, this is it. This is the bed and breakfast I'm staying. Without Google Maps, we'll never find this place. And even with Google Maps, it was, it was really difficult. There's so many little streets. Really pretty, like, this is very Italian. Closet facing the alley. Little TV that I'll never use. Oh, the bathroom is really nice. Really big bathroom. Shower stall. Wow. This this is great. Okay, so 
It's 1 p.m. I am so sleepy right now. I slept not even one minute on the plane. Um, I just want to talk about the United Airlines business class for just a second here. I think overall, it was a really good experience. The people were really nice. The food was pretty darn good. I did like the Sunday though. When it gets to your foot area, it's pretty narrow, still okay. But if you compare it to the business class on, uh, let's say, Singapore Airlines or any of the Asian airlines, it really just doesn't compare. But I think what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna take a nap for a few hours and then I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna take a shower, and then I'm gonna eat the heck out of Venice. Thanks for watching this video, guys. See ya.